So I'm Consul Bachikov. Uh, I'm an animal behaviorist. I have been uh, working for a number of years decoding the language of prairie dogs. And uh, now I'm working with animal languages in general. I'm the author of Chasing Dr. Doolittle, uh, which is a book about animal language and what we know about animal language. And uh, I'm very interested in their ability to think, their ability to reason, their ability to plan, their ability to talk, and language in general. When you got started with this work, did you originally go into it wanting to learn and research more about language and communication, or did you want to start by researching prairie dogs and um, the language component came after that? I initially started working with prairie dogs because I was interested in uh, what makes animals social and prairie dogs uh, had a social system that was poorly described at that point. And so I thought that prairie dogs would be a wonderful way of studying social behavior. And as I studied social behavior in prairie dogs, I recognized that they had alarm calls, which at the time everyone, me included, thought was just a simple chirp that indicated that they were feeling alarmed and there was nothing else to it. But the more that I worked with prairie dogs, the more I recognized that this chirp had differences in it. And so I started looking at these differences and started teasing apart these differences. And through a series of experiments, eventually I found that the differences were very, very complex. And so they could pack a lot of nuances into the chirp, which we couldn't hear until the advent of uh, computerized uh, methods of analysis. And they had essentially what I would call a very complex language. Do you see what your research has been doing with the prairie dogs or what, um, when they're vocalizing, do you see that more as just a communication or do you um, take it to that next level and say that it is a language? I am comfortable calling it a language because it has all of the features that uh, linguists have said you have to find in an animal communication system to call it a language. I have said in my book, Chasing Dr. Doodle, that languages are ecologically determined for each species, that each species has certain ecological pressures on it and evolutionary pressures that determine the kind of language that it's going to have. I don't expect prairie dogs to stand up in the field and recite a Shakespearean sonnet. But I do expect, as I have found, that prairie dogs will stand up and describe the color of clothes of a human, the size and shape of a human, whether that human is carrying a gun, and other features about that human, which is ecologically relevant to them because they're describing a predator who hunts them. I think that a lot of cognition goes into their vocalizations because they have to observe what are the physical features of the predator. They have to then incorporate this into some kind of mental vocabulary and then produce a sound. And one of the experiments that we did, we had a person walk out in a blue shirt who's carrying a shotgun and initially he fired the shotgun off into the air. And the prairie dogs gave an alarm call for him that indicated that he had a blue shirt and described his physical features, but they also had an addendum, which we thought indicated that he had a gun. And then for the length of the experiment, another month, whenever he showed up, he was always dressed the same way, so they gave the call for him describing that he had a blue shirt, but they also tacked on this addendum, which we thought carried the meaning of a gun. So for a month, they remembered that he had a gun, even though he did not have a gun for the rest of the experiment. Were you able to test to see how their vocalizations changed to describe something that they, you know, is unknown to them? 
We also did some experiments where we had uh, circles and we had triangles running across the field on a, a set of wires and the prairie dogs had distinct calls for the circles and they had distinct calls for the triangles. So these are things that prairie dogs have never seen before and yet they were able to come up with a novel word for each one of those things, for an oval, for a circle and for a triangle. They're much more complex creatures than we have given them credit for. But then that's the story of animals in general. We have generally tended to give animals very short shrift. You know, people have talked about a bird brain or people have talked about it's like a chicken, a new day is uh, a new day for a chicken. Uh, but we find out that none of that is true. All the animals that we've been looking at have much, much more complexity. And we in our human arrogance have assumed that we're the top of the heap in terms of complexity. But the more that we look at animals, we find that there's a tremendous amount of complexity there that we just have not recognized. And we're fortunately starting to look at that now. Real quickly, is there a best way to support your work? I know you mentioned you had a book coming out. Or yeah, I think the best way to support my work is to buy my book, Chasing Dr. Doodle, um, which doesn't really give me very much money because I get pittances royalties for it. But at the same time, it helps spread the message that animals have language and animals are much more complex than we've given them credit for. And that's what I would like the world to know.